I'm Leslie Avancino, and our family farms in the Linden, California area. Today we're going to talk about the life cycle of a cherry and the importance of it to our local economy. The cherry is the shortest growing crop of all of the crops grown in our area. It grows basically from April until May and June when it gets harvested. Let's start at the beginning of the year in the winter time is when the trees are dormant. And dormancy usually goes from November to January. During that time, the trees are not dead. They are storing up energy. When the cherries come out of dormancy in February, they start budding. At that point, the farmers will take an estimate of the buds on the tree. When the farmers estimate the buds, they're doing this so that they can get an idea of the size of the crop and the equipment and preparation that is gonna to need to be done to harvest the crop. March is our bloom month. In the springtime when the flowers show up, there's an important part of the farming community and it happens to be the bee. He's the most important because he has to pollinate every single flower for there to be a cherry. If it's foggy, rainy, sleet, freezing, they don't like to come out of the boxes. And so your crop is in danger. If all goes well and the bees got to pollinate your crop, the petals start falling off of the trees and you'll start seeing little green buds that are cherries. They take another estimate on the green cherries. This is no guarantee that the green cherries on there are still gonna be available to harvest when they're red. Some of the issues that can happen in between are weather related. If we get a hard wind or sleet or hail, they can get damaged. When the cherries are nearing ripening, sometimes the weather is not helpful. And so the farmers will assist the ripening process by laying down reflective plastic so that the, the light reflects up and underneath the crop and it makes it ripen quicker. When the cherries are ripe and on the trees, there still can be problems. If we get rain or hail when the cherries are ripe, there's a little crevice where the stem meets the cherry that acts like a little cup and it absorbs all the water. The farmers go to great lengths to preserve their harvestable crop and so they'll send the spray rigs out to blow dry their crop. Another way they do it is using a helicopter and the helicopters will fly four to 10 feet above the tree line and basically the blow dry the tops of the trees. When the farmers are not able to get the rain water off of the trees, they absorb the water and then they split. That makes them unmarketable. The pickers start showing up about 4.30 and at, as soon as it's bright enough outside to see, they start picking. They're given a bucket like this one and a punch cart and they fill their buckets up and every time they get their buckets filled up they punch their cart. Picking is very hard work. This bucket here will hold about 10 pounds of cherries so just imagine if you were carrying your mom's 10 pound bag of potatoes how hard that is. Just imagine climbing up and down the ladders all day long with this bucket. When you're picking cherries you want to leave the stems on. The fruit will last longer in your refrigerator, have a longer shelf life if the stems are attached. So when they are picking cherries they have to pick them with the steps on. Once the cherries are harvested and dumped into the bigger tubs, they go to the packing shed. Hi, my name is Scott Brown. I'm the production manager at Marotta Produce Company. We're a grower, packer, shipper of California cherries. So what is exciting about California cherries is that we're the first cherries harvested in the Northern Hemisphere every year. We've had a very cold winter this last year. That cold winter allowed all the trees to go fully to sleep or into dormancy. When cherry trees get a lot of sleep, they produce a very nice bloom. And so the good rest that the cherries got during the winter led to a very nice bloom, which has led to good pollination, which has led to a ton of cherries in the trees. Those bins are delivered to the packing facility where we begin cooling the cherries because that's gonna lead to a longer shelf life cold cherries stay fresher longer and so it's very important to store your cherries in the refrigerator. We like picking the cherries really before the sun comes up or right as the sun is coming up because the cherries are still cool from the evening and so we'll pick all morning long. Once it starts getting warm in the afternoon we'll stop picking. The cherries tend to get a little bit softer and we can damage them and so we'll pick on Monday morning for example. We will bring those cherries to the packing facility. If we plan to export those cherries into different markets of the world we'll need to fumigate them that night. The next morning, we bring them out of fumigation. We'll run them on Tuesday morning. By Tuesday night, they're getting on an airplane. 
And so they're flying over the ocean into markets all around the world where they're really in demand. Our job at the Packing Shed is to make sure that we maximize the value for all of the cherries that have been picked off of the tree by hand. And so it's very important that we separate every grower's fruit individually through the packing lines. Where that starts is at the bin-up. As we bring the cherries out of the cooler onto the processing line, we weigh every single bin. First thing we do is we submerge that bin into a tank of cold water, which very gently removes those cherries from the bin. Cherries that have sugar and are good quality will sink in water. Sticks, leaves, and cherries that don't have any sugar or white cherries will float to the top. And so that's the quickest way that we can separate those things away from the good fruit. California cherries are an amazing specialty crop in that the way that we process them, we produce very little, if not zero, byproducts. So I explained how sticks and leaves float to the surface of the water. We'll collect those up and put them into a bin, and then we'll take those out to a goat pasture or something like that to spread them, uh, just use as compost or as feed. Now, the other byproducts that we generate as a processing facility are little tiny undersized cherries. They're not big enough to really eat as a fresh product, and so we put those in a bin and then we send them off for juice. And so they'll go to a place that will crush them and take the cherry juice out of them and use it as an ingredient in other products. Uh, the cherries that don't have any color, that are really light colored pink, they don't have a lot of sugar, they don't taste very good, they'll be sold into maraschino cherries. And so they'll go for further processing and you'll find those on your ice cream sundae. The other thing is we use a lot of water inside of the sheds. We clean the fruit with the water. And so it's very important to us that we do something with that water. We will pump it out of our packing lines into a pond on our property and irrigate our walnuts with it. That leads to the most important or the first step of the process being the cluster cutter. We need to separate the cherries from their clusters. Now we use a machine with a conveyor belt that carries the cherries and little fingers that will pick up the stems right at the top. And then there's a saw blade that's spinning up here that will separate every individual cherry one by one so that they all have a stem. This is important because we need to isolate and individualize the cherries before we sort them. If a good cherry is attached to a bad cherry, it might both end up in the back. And so by putting them one at a time across the optical sorter, we're able to get the right cherries into the right boxes. And so after cluster cutting, we begin hydrocooling. Again, keeping the fruit cold is very important for keeping the fruit fresh and firm. And so we spend five minutes raining cold water over the top of the cherries, 32 degrees, almost ice cold. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to pull the heat out of the cherry. So after we cool the cherries, it's time to sort them. We use a really interesting piece of equipment to sort the cherries. So we will put every cherry onto its own cup and then we will use cameras to take a lot of pictures of those cherries. So we get 36 pictures of every single cherry. The things that we're looking for, simply separating dark colored cherries from light ones. We can separate big ones from small ones. And most importantly, we're separating good ones from bad ones. Things that may happen in the orchard is say a bird starts eating on one of the cherries or insects damage it, or maybe it's just disease. The cameras can analyze each picture and figure out which cherries are the best to eat. Those are the only cherries that we put into the box. So we end up putting the big cherries with the big cherries and the little cherries with the little cherries and the dark ones with the dark ones and the light ones with the light ones. And each one of those have a special market. And so depending on where we're gonna sell those cherries, whether it's in a grocery store or whether we're gonna sell them into restaurants, we put them in different packaging. It's important that after we pack the cherries, we make sure that those cartons, those boxes full of fruit are as cold as possible. The best way to do that is to take the pallets of packaging boxes and we put them inside of a cooler. We make two lanes of pallets in front of a fan. We pull a tarp out over the top of those pallets to create a tunnel. Then when we turn that fan on, it sucks all the cold air out of the room through the cherries back into the refrigeration system, basically forcing that temperature down to 32 degrees before we ship them so that they last long. The reason the size of the cherry matters is because our customers like different size cherries. The larger ones um, go to our export market and for gourmet restaurants and high-end grocery stores. The ones over here tend to go to the regular grocery store that your mom and dad shop at. These smaller ones are for street vendors, farmers markets, and juicing. Each is a different price. Let's talk about the economy for a minute. When I talk about the economy, I'm talking about the importance of it and money in our local community. The crop that the farmers got paid for was worth over $88 million. 
but the farmer doesn't get that. He pays his employees for the year, he pays his mortgage, he pays his insurance, gas, fuel, electric. But the most important thing is the taxes. The taxes support our community here. Cherries are just an example, but agriculture in general is our number one business. At the end of the season, after the cherries have been harvested, the farmer continues to take care of his crops. When you're out shopping, it would be really helpful if you pay attention to where your food comes from. Read the labels on the backs of the packaging and see where it's coming from. If it's from the United States, it's from a local community. We need to support our local growers. And while you're reading the back of the package, take notice of how healthy cherries are. They're full of antioxidants, vitamin C, a potassium. They're good for diabetes and regulating it in the same way that your parents and your teacher and the police and your doctor take care of you. Farmers take care of us as well.